So here we are on the top floor of the Andaz Hollywood Hotel on lovely Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, down the street from the famed Whiskey A Go Go, for those of you who know rock history. You may also know that this hotel once had a different identity. This hotel was once known as the Riot Hyatt. So the way it works is the bands would play the gig at the Whiskey, they'd come back to their hotel room here in the Riot Hyatt, they would open the window, they would take the furniture, they would pick it up, they would throw it out the window, and they do that over and over and over again. You don't want to be walking down Sunset when Robert Plant was in the building, okay? So it's only appropriate that we're talking about the future of the audio entertainment and information industry at a place called the Riot Hyatt, I think. So I want to share something with you different this year. I thought it would be interesting to do some original research and actually answer some new questions this year. So that's what I did. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to find out, for a change, what listener attitudes about audio advertising are? How do listeners see audio advertising? What are their perceptions about audio advertising? Now, let me explain what this is and what it isn't. Let me begin with what it is not. This is not, this is not what works, quote unquote, what moves people through the turnstile, what sells product, what sells services. What works for your client to you know, achieve whatever they're advertising? That's not what this is. Lots of that research exists. You've seen a lot of it. I don't need to retread it here. This is also not, quote, what the client wants to buy research. As you well know, very often what the client wants to buy is not even what works. That we know. Um, so this is not that kind of research, nor is this the kind of research that says, how long should my spot break be? How uh, frequent should they be? Um, those are questions which are easy for consumers to route around. When I've done research on that in the past, what people typically tell me is, take all your uh, spots, put them into a long, as long a possible set, and make as few as, me as possible of them. And I say, great, well, is that because that creates a better audio experience for you? And they'll say, no, it's because I can pop out and now I don't have to come back for a while, and when I do, it'll be straight music. In other words, it's their way of avoiding the spots not their ideal experience of the spots. Does that make sense? So in other words, it's not relevant to a survey of listeners about their attitudes because they're just gonna tell us the best way to circumvent the spots. That's not what this is. What this is, is an inquiry into what people like and don't like about audio advertising. What they think attracts their attention, what they think turns them off about audio advertising. Why is it even worthwhile to pursue this? given that consumers aren't the clients, they're not buying the spots, right? And this doesn't necessarily, just because people like something doesn't mean it necessarily works in the marketplace. Well, the reason is that times have changed. And today, people have choices, and people are seduced by alternatives, right? Um, times have changed a lot. There are a lot more choices today, and here's the reality. There could be somebody out there, a platform, a station, whatever, doing something very much like what you're doing, but with an advertising experience that is more in tune with what listeners like. If that happens, listeners will defect from you to them. See what I mean? The more the audio experience of advertising is in tune with what I, the listener, want, the more that will attract listeners. And the more those listeners will defect from platforms or stations which couldn't care less about what listeners want. That's why this is important. That's why I'm asking these questions. So let me review for you what the content is, what the objectives are for the research I'm going to show you today. What are the critical ingredients to your ads that listeners say they will pay attention to? What will you pay attention to? What sparks your attention? It's a reasonable question. What commercial forms do listeners say they'll pay the most attention to? What do consumers think make your ads succeed? And what do consumers think make your ads fail? Really simple questions, right? Questions that shockingly are hardly, if ever, asked of listeners until now. Let me show you the methodology. This was a bona fide research study. This was not a poll. We paid people for their opinions here. We did more than 1,000 interviews in conjunction with my friends at uh, New Voodoo. They were online interviews. As I say, these were random interviews, not a poll. People compensated for their opinions. Men and women, 18 to 54, throughout the country, 
between May 5th and 10th, 2016. That's the parameters of what we did. So let me talk about the content that was in the actual survey. These were the main questions. What ad content or style attracts your attention? What ad form attracts your attention? What makes an audio ad or message work best for you? And what makes an audio ad or message turn you off? Really simple. So let's begin at the beginning. What ad content or style attracts your attention? This is the question that we asked. This is actually the question. Think about the audio commercials you hear, no matter where you hear them. In other words, no matter what platform you hear them on, radio, online radio, podcast, doesn't matter. Think about the characteristics of those ads you remember best. Would you be very likely, somewhat likely, or not at all likely to pay attention to an ad? Which? All I care about is very likely. The top five are the critical answers. Here are the top five answers. Number one, relevant to your needs and interests. Number two is so funny or clever everybody's talking about it. Number three, provides a clear, straightforward message. Number four, does something surprising. And number five, tells a story. Those are the top five. I have three pages. This is the first page. Note, by the way, that number two is very close to number one. Just because your ads are relevant doesn't mean your ads are as impactful as if they are also funny. In my view, I was surprised to see funny so close to relevant. Here's the middle of the list. For a product service you already know, contains a lot of sounds that create pictures in your mind, sounds like a regular person talking versus a professional radio voice. Mentions the name of the product throughout, contains sounds you associate with brands like the Taco Bell bong. By the way, a lot of this content, uh, I was assisted with this from Bob McCurdy. Those of you who know Bob McCurdy know that there is no human alive who knows more about audio advertising than Bob. He was very helpful in this. Here's the bottom of the list. For a product or service you haven't heard of, for a product or service you've seen on TV, fewer words, single voice, multiple voices, speak slowly, moments of silence, all at the bottom of the list. What's the takeaway? The takeaway is the top of the list. And that list is, be relevant to my needs interests, be funny, clever, buzzworthy, have clear, straightforward message, surprise, and tell a story. Or to boil it down even further, on the tweetable image, relevant, funny, clear, surprise story. Now, you may look at this and say, yeah, but not entirely surprising, right? I've kind of, this is what I would imagine. Okay, let's go back to your inventory, smarty pants. Let's rate every spot on your air on your platform against these metrics. How do they rate? Maybe we have some distance to go. Number two, what ad form attracts attention? Slightly different question here. The different ways you might hear advertising messages. Now we're talking about form. Here again, the very likelies. Again, page one of two. Five second commercial, 15 second, two second, a one sentence promotional sponsor mission, a 30 second commercial. Takeaway number one, the shortest commercial doesn't win. The shortest commercial is three deep. Takeaway number two, 30 seconds is poorer than 15, five, or two. Here's the last page. Ads that weave a continuous story in subsequent commercials, right, narratives. Endorsement, an endorsement for specific sponsors integrated into show content, in other words, more native advertising type endorsement. Audio content created by advertisers, which sounds like the audio content you listen to now, total native ads. A 60 second commercial, look where it is. A 90 second commercial, that's the bottom of the list. So the best way to ruin an endorsement is to make it 60 seconds. So by these measures, an ad should be short, a one sentence promotional or sponsor mention, endorsements are preferred over 60s but not over 30s or shorter, Native ad content is preferred over 60s. Frankly, almost anything is preferred over 60s. So again, what's the bottom line? Short, short, shorter than you think. This leads to a few questions. Why would we ever waste 60 seconds on one spot or one endorsement? Endorsements are commonly 60 seconds, right? That's what the agencies want, in part because they think they'll run longer, because somehow there's this myth that the longer they talk, the more effective it will be. Where's the evidence for that? Why sell length rather than impact? Why sell longer rather than better? Why do we have to create a situation where the audio advertising experience is similar to what you experience when you're in the dentist's chair? 
where if the dentist says to you, you know, this is going to hurt, you will say to the dentist, well, okay, then just make it short. <laughs> we can make ads shorter. We can also make ads better. There's precedent for this. You look at a platform like Vine. Granted, that's video, right? But every single one, six seconds long. Six seconds. Look what they do in six seconds. You could say, well, you can't tell us we need a 15-second spot and then tell us to do a story. We can't do that in 15 seconds. Well, years ago, Ernest Hemingway did it in six words. If he can do it in six words, can't we do it in six, 15 seconds? YouTube did a poll a while back, a few years ago, and people told them that the majority of users were willing to watch an ad of up to 15 seconds long before they got to their content. Ah, there's that number, 15 seconds again. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if you look at the ads that are actually shared, the YouTube ads that are shared, they are much longer than this. They are in the three to four minute range. Well, why is that? Because they're actually good. Because they meet all those criteria we outlined up front. Because the truth is that the more you pack goodness into the spot, the more relevant, funny, straightforward, surprising, story-filled the ad, the longer it can be, and vice versa. The less any of that exists, the shorter it must be. Or we are turning our listeners off from our audio experience and sending them somewhere else. Number three, what makes audio ads and messages work best for you? This was a verbatim question. I asked for a verbatim response. I have a thousand answers to this question. I ran them all through a platform that allowed me to create a word cloud. And the word cloud means that the bigger the word, the more often that word was mentioned in the response. And remember the question, what makes an audio ad or message work best for you? These are their answers. Look what stands out. Short, to the point, funny, relevant, clear, attention, catchy, interesting. How do your ads fare on these variables? The flip side, when does an audio ad or message turn you off? Number one word, long. Now, we didn't ask about stop sets here. We didn't ask about clusters of ads. We asked about ad, singular, long, annoying, boring, talking, loud, fast, monotone, obnoxious. The fact that these ads may work is different from the question of how listeners feel about them. Because if they don't feel good about them and someone else offers a better alternative, they will flee. So again, the final takeaways here, just to review. Relevant, funny, clear, surprise, and story, the big five words to keep in mind. And then of course, short, no, even shorter than you think, unless you're gonna pack it so full of good stuff that it's worth listening to for longer. And with that, I want to welcome you all to HiVio 2016. Thank you.